Hello, my name is Laura Lopez and I am with the TTU Ethics Center and today we are interviewing an alumni of Texas Tech University, Israel Miller. Good afternoon. How are you doing? I'm doing well. Can you tell me where you're working now? Sure. I work for a law firm in Dallas. Um, we have three offices, one in Houston, one in Waco, and one here in Dallas. Uh, the law firm's name is Gray, Reed & McGraw, LLP. We have about 150 attorneys and we practice in almost all areas of law. My area of specialty is tax law and um, I specialize even more uh, in state and local taxes. I know that recently um, the interest rates dropped. What type of advice can you give to students that are overwhelmed by their student loan debt as far as maybe consolidating or just leaving things the way they are now? Student loan debts <laughs> at this point are still not um, um, able to be, to, to be forgiven in bankruptcy. Although there has been a real push recently for that legislation, particularly given the number of universities um, in the not too recent past who were taking advantage folks. And so under, uh, under Obama, there was already a, a program in place that if someone had been taken advantage of by a for-profit university and it turned out their degree was useless, not something that would happen at tech, um, then, their, then their educational costs could be forgiven. Lawsuits filed against her to make her follow the rules. Um, the pressure hadn't been that significant because I think that most of those people weren't being that loud about it. But as more and more folks are hit with the inability to pay their student loans, I think it's going to become a bigger issue. Even if nothing changes, a person has agreed to pay their student loans back. And at this point, there's no way out of it. So whatever plans are available, deferment, um, if the person doesn't act on that, a lot of interest will be added on and it'll just make it tougher later to pay off. Um, in these kind of situations, I think just regardless of what kind of bill it is, um, maybe it's rent, maybe it's a car payment, the best course of action is to reach out to the creditor and try to make an arrangement. At least let them know what's going on and that you, would, that you intend to pay this back as soon as you can. Um, the failure to to keep in touch with them makes it harder. Now I will say, I know that the, everybody else is doing this at the same time. So a lot of the phone lines are overwhelmed. Um, and so people just have to keep calling back. The same thing is going on right now with the Texas Workforce Commission who's trying to handle um, unemployment claims. There's just too many people calling in. Do you think it would be in someone's best interest to consolidate? Would they even, qualify for a cheaper interest rate? That depends. The, uh, if I understand correctly, the consolidation now all goes through the Department of Education. Um, and so presumably the best creditor is the U.S. government. They're, they're the most flexible and they have the most financial uh, wherewithal to stand this kind of situation. Do you have any financial planning tips to help those in the current environment? Well, um, too little too late is, is always a problem. And I'll tell you in my, my own situation, um, standard financial planning advice is to have a three month emergency fund, okay? That you can have enough money to meet all your, all your uh, financial obligations for three months. Hopefully this is over in three months and that, that pans out. I'm a little more risk adverse. And so I had uh, a year's worth of an emergency fund built up. Um, other financial planners would say that that was not the uh, best use of my money because I should have taken the additional money and invested it in the stock market when the stock market's at such a low. Um, maybe, uh, maybe that's right. 
the alternative is maybe the stock market hasn't come to its absolute low. So whatever in you invested now would just also be a loss, at least initially. And um, that still doesn't protect you from the downside of losing your job or anything else that might come up. The, in the short term though, I have, uh, I've adopted a much um, more conservative approach to things. I don't drive as much, so my gas has gone down. I saw an article a couple days ago that um, so many people aren't driving right now that, that uh, major insurance companies are returning some of their premiums because the number of car accidents has gone down. Um, so there may be some money coming back that way. I imagine most people though are finding that their home internet uh, expense is not negotiable anymore. Right. And maybe it used to be something fun, but now it's key to keeping their job. Um, I also find that my, that my cell phone is vital. I forwarded my office phone to my home. And so the clients don't see any difference, but, um, I can't imagine, I can't imagine that this would be a time to cut your phone bill or your internet. What type of tools are available in the current market to help those who might be struggling? Our firm has a task force that we put together. Um, as I mentioned earlier, we've, we have about 150 attorneys working in all areas of law. So we've got employment law attorneys. That's clearly an, an important part right now with people being let go, people being furloughed, people being offered uh, a substantial pay cut in order to keep their job. Um, some places, no problems at all. They just have to adjust to working from home. That's probably the least of their, their worries. Um, you've got people losing their jobs. You've got people unable to pay their bills. Each one of these falls into a different area of law. And so what my firm has done is created a task force and we tried to summarize these massive bills into useful information for the average person. So we put out, we put out summaries that are one to five pages long, written in simple English as a starter. And for most of our clients, we have um, just given them access to that. Anyone can have access to it. It's at the top of our website, www.grayred.com. That's grayread.com. And it's called COVID-19 Alerts. And we've also created a hyperlink to it on the bottom of all of our emails. So it goes out with everything we do. Of course, people are being inundated with COVID-19 right now. Everywhere they turn, there's some, kind of, there's some kind of notice. And we're aware of that. But in a time when most of our clients don't need legal services per se, they just need some advice on how to keep their business from going under, we consider this an investment in their future and in ours. Do you have any other financial tips that you'd like to share with us? I have, uh, I have found in my personal work that the number that the hours in my day have, have, um, that I'm actually working has shrunk quite a bit. So normally I would try to, to make my entire day billable. So everything I do, I can actually send a bill to my client and say, I did this for you for this amount of time. Um, right now that's shrunk so much, but I still have to be in, available all day in case somebody calls, in case somebody emails, whatever they need, I need to be, be able to respond. And so with all the downtime, I have turned to reading a huge stack of books that I hadn't got to before. And so some of them are less meaningful now, like the four hour work or the four day work week. Um, but I still think that the information is valuable. And if you've got this much free time, then you should invest in certain things. I think you should invest in your relationships because that's the most valuable part anyway. I try to spend an hour a day um, calling friends and family and clients, just checking in on them. I know that they don't have any work. That's fine. Just want to see how they're doing. Remind them that uh, remind them that I'm here, and um, see see if there's anything they do need. Um, and then investing in yourself with continuing to to read um, and get updated on something new. This whole COVID thing has created a new a new arena for attorneys to help uh, and everyone else, accountants and financial advisors 
to be able to identify to their clients what programs are available. A month ago, this didn't even exist, and now all of a sudden we're trying to become experts. If that's not something that someone wants to become an expert in, that's fine, but take the time to become an expert in something else. We often find that we don't have any time. Now we're inundated with extra free time. I've also really committed to uh, working out every day. It's so easy to stay stuck in the house. Um, but now I, I try to make sure that I get at least an hour of physical fitness in every day. And it's, it's helped me keep my head straight. Do you have anything else that you would like to cover? No, but I would like to thank you for inviting me to speak. Um, it's been quite an honor.